You may think you know this W205 series 4th generation Mercedes C-Class, but if you haven't tried one since this model's far-reaching mid-term update, you probably don't. What was needed here was a completely rejuvenated engine range, and that's what we've got, along with improved safety and connectivity. As a result, this model is now back on the pace in its segment. For years, Mercedes has talked about democratizing luxury, and more than any other car the company makes, it's their C-Class model that's tried hardest to epitomize that approach. In the past, in its earlier forms, this contender has somewhat rather struggled with the whole idea of delivering elements of S-Class style opulence in a more compact form. But this Mark IV W205 series design has done better in meeting this challenging brief. Here, we're going to look at the much improved version launched in the spring of 2018. One in every five cars that this Stuttgart brand sells is a C-Class, and many will tell you that it's really with this model, not with the company's smaller front-driven offerings, that Mercedes ownership actually starts. Now, over 9.5 million C-Classes have been sold since the original first-generation W202 series version was launched in 1993, with sleeker W203 and W204 second- and third-generation designs following in 2002. 2007. Before this, W205 series, fourth generation car first arrived in 2014. For our market, this car is built at the brand's South African East London plant, but is also assembled in China, Germany and North America and sells in over 120 countries. Coupe and Cabriolet versions of this model provide a fashionable twist on the C-Class formula, but here our focus is on the coarse saloon and estate variants that most buyers will want. These days, the C-Class doesn't have to be the cheapest saloon Mercedes makes. That role in the range is now occupied by a four-door version of the front-driven A-Class. So, there's a little more scope for this car to include pricier technology. And with this revised Mark IV model, there's plenty of that as part of what the company tells us is the most extensive update in the history of this model. Over 6,500 parts have been changed, half of the car's complete tally to make sure that it's a more complete rival for revitalized versions of its D-segment premium competitors. Principally, a refreshed version of the Audi A4 and an all-new version of BMW's 3 Series. This car outsold both those models in our market in its original form, but to continue that showing, Mercedes knew it had to substantially improve the available engine range. So that's where much of the effort's been directed as part of this fourth generation model's midlife package of changes. The volume diesel variants get the vastly improved two litre black pump fueled units we first saw in the 10th generation E-Class. And, in addition, the mild hybrid 48-volt technology used on luxury models like the S-Class and the CLS has filtered its way into this car, transforming the power and efficiency proposition of the mid-range C200 petrol model. There are also plug-in petrol and diesel units too, and updates to the top AMG performance models. Across the range, C-Class buyers also get smarter looks, upgraded cabin infotainment technology, extra safety kit and fresh elements of autonomous driving tech. This then is the C-Class that BMW and Audi perhaps always feared Mercedes would build. Let's put it to the test. When this W205 series fourth generation C-Class model was first launched in 2014, there was lots to distract us from the awkward fact that hardly anything beneath the bonnet had changed. It was all very well for Mercedes to talk about aluminium architecture, driving mode systems and airmatic suspension, but the uncomfortable truth was that the engine and transmission package really wasn't that much different to that fitted to the previous generation car, a design dating all the way back to 2007. 
It could hardly be more different now, and the key changes relate to the two volume variants. The C200 petrol model we're trying today gets the brand's latest 48 volt mild hybrid EQ boost technology, and the C220D best selling derivative at last ditches its long standing 2.1 litre diesel in favour of the far cleaner and more sophisticated 2 litre OM654 series unit from the E Class. Mercedes clearly still sees a future for diesel because it's bucks the current trend by mating it with plug-in power in an advanced C300 DE model. If perhaps, understandably, you don't think that the concept of a smoky diesel really suits the plug-in premise, then there's a petrol plug-in model, the C300E, available too. All the main C-Class variants come fitted non-negotiably with a much smoother auto transmission these days, a 9G Tronic Plus 9-speed box replacing the 7-speeder fitted across the range at the original launch. Having given you the headlines that sit around this revised Mark IV model, let's give you a brief idea of the C-Class range structure. In case you're not familiar with it, our focus directed towards the saloon and estate body styles that concern us today. Things kick off with a couple of Renault-derived 1.6-litre petrol and diesel units, developing around 160 horsepower and fitted to base C180 petrol and C200D diesel variants that, rightly, hardly anyone buys. They're the only ones that can be had with manual transmission. You then move into the sales heartland, the C200 petrol and C220D diesel versions just mentioned, both of which can be ordered with optional 4MATIC all-wheel drive. If these core versions of this car aren't powerful enough for you, there are minority interest C300 petrol and C300D diesel derivatives with a few more brake horses. Then come the C300E and C300DE plug-in models we just talked about. And finally, there are the rip-snorting Mercedes AMG high-performance street racers, the V6 C43 4MATIC and the rear-driven V8-powered C63 variants. So, something for everyone? Well, perhaps. Traditionally, the C-Class has never been of much interest to people prioritising sharp handling in a car of this kind, but the stiffer chassis of this fourth-generation design has enabled this model lineup to take a small but significant step forward in that regard. Like a rival BMW 3 Series, but unlike a competing Audi A4, it's rear-driven, and there's a torque-vectoring rear brake system that seamlessly applies slight brake pressure to the outside rear wheel during tight cornering to help get the power down where it's needed through the bends. It's not enough to make volume versions of this C-Class a driving enthusiast's choice in this segment, but you might prefer this W205 series model's slightly more purposeful demeanour over the slightly anodyne feel of that rival A4. To try and emphasise this, AMG-lined trimmed variants like the one we're trying here get sharper sports direct steer speed-sensitive steering and firmer sports suspension lowered by 15mm. Mercedes knows, though, that buyers interested in throwing this car about will be an extreme minority, which is why the company has continued to prioritise this C-Class's overriding emphasis on cosseting comfort, and to that end has stolen a march on its sector rivals by making this the only car in the class that could be ordered with optional air suspension. This setup is much more sophisticated than the adaptive passive damping systems that can be specified on competing models, not only because it wafts you about on cushions of air rather than steel springs, but also because it automatically lowers itself by 15 mm at high speeds and can be programmed to raise itself by up to 25 mm for extra ground clearance at lower ones. Like the standard springs, the Airmatic setup doesn't quite cope with speed humps and potholes as seamlessly as we'd like, but at a cruise, it offers a balance between feel and fluidity that we think sets the benchmark in this segment. You have to pay extra for Airmatic if you want to be able to influence ride quality via the driving mode system that all cars of this kind feature these days. This particular package is called Dynamic Select and in its standard form allows you to tweak drive response, steering feel and ESP settings through various stages. Comfort or Eco if you're in a relaxed mood, Sport or Sport Plus if you're pushing on and Individual if you want to set up the various system parameters yourself. 
Let's get back to engines and model derivatives. You can see why so many are drawn to the C220D. This 194 horsepower 2 litre diesel unit is vastly better than the lesser C200D's variants Rumbly 1.6 and doesn't cost much more. Drive a C220D around for a week and you'll emerge from it wondering just what more you could really want from a car like this. We're used to a volume C-Class diesel derivative being a bit behind the technology curve, but this one's engine is a real strength. It's probably the most refined four-cylinder diesel power plant we've come across and always feels impressively smooth and free from vibration. That's a vital consideration when you're looking for a car that will ease you along with a minimum of fuss. Even under firm acceleration, this engine remains calm, unruffled and pretty quick too. There's a lusty 400 newton meters of torque, which is perhaps why 62 miles an hour arrives more rapidly than you'd expect in just 6.9 seconds on the way to a top speed that's rated at 149 miles an hour. The alternative C300D model uses the same engine in an uprated 245 horsepower state of tune and can improve those readings to 5.9 seconds and 155 miles an hour. If your annual mileage isn't vast though, it's well worth giving the revitalised C200 petrol model a second look, which is why we thought we'd try it here. This variant's previous 2-litre engine, which continues on in the rarely seen 258 horsepower C300 derivative, is no more. Lift the bonnet on a C200 and you'll now find a 1.5-litre unit, which sounds a bit disappointing until you learn that it's boosted not only by a twin-scroll turbocharger, but also a 10 kilowatt slug of battery power under hard acceleration. This comes courtesy of this mild hybrid power plant's 48-volt electrical system, with the extra so-called EQ boost punch designed to fill the hole in the torque curve you'd normally get before the turbos spool up. As a result, as promised, this really does feel like a larger capacity engine, or at least it would do if it was a little quieter under harsher throttle inputs. In that respect, this unit's a bit of a disappointment. You don't, of course, get anything like the pulling power you would in a C220D, but there's a decent 184 horsepower output, enough to provide for a very respectable set of performance stats. 62 miles an hour from rest, occupying 7.7 .7 seconds, en route to 149 miles an hour. Of course, the primary purpose of this C200 model's EQ boost technology is to improve efficiency. At very low speeds or at a cruise with the car in its eco-dynamic select mode, you'll be powered purely on electrical energy, though for very short periods. For longer durations of milk float mobility, able to make more of a difference to fuel and CO2 stats, you'll need deeper pockets for one of the pricey plug-in models we referenced earlier. Both the C300E petrol variant and the C300DE diesel mate combustion power with a 13.5 kilowatt hour battery capable of offering an all-electric driving range of just over 30 miles. And in both cases, combining a 2-litre engine with a 700 newton meter slug of electrified punch provides impressively potent performance for those times when you're more interested in being fast than frugal. The 300DE, for instance, develops 302 horsepower makes 62 miles per hour from rest in just 5.7 seconds, but when driven more gently might return as much as 90 miles per gallon. You can see the appeal. Of course, if you're really interested in performance, then nothing but the V6 and V8 engine full-fat Mercedes AMG models will do. These feature only minor updates as part of this mid-term facelift, though the C43's 3-litre twin-turbo V6 does now develop 390 horsepower, which is 23 more than before, meaning that 62 miles an hour flashes by in just 4.7 seconds. The C43 comes only with 4MATIC all-wheel drive and the usual 9G Tronic Plus auto transmission. In contrast, the V8 C63 comes only in rear-driven form and must be handled with an uprated AMG SpeedShift MCT version of that 9-speed box to cope with its greater output, 476 horsepower from the standard model or 510 from the uprated S version. At this level, in the range, just 4 seconds is needed for the 62-mile-an-hour sprint on the way to a top speed that in the C63S is 180 miles an hour. 
But high performance isn't our focus here, and it won't be for many C-Class buyers. This car aims to bring an S-Class limo-like demeanour to middle management buyers, and to a great extent it still sets the current standard in its class when it comes to doing just that. Yes, we'd like a little more steering feedback, but you quickly forget about that as the 9-speed box slurs effortlessly through its ratios and the world eases past your window in slow motion. With the optional driving assistance package, you could even introduce an element of autonomous driving, courtesy of an active distance assist Distronic feature, which basically drives for you at a cruise. And an included route-based speed adaptation system that uses GPS data to automatically adapt your speed before curves, roundabouts, junctions and toll roads. It's all very S-Class like, which is exactly what buyers of this car will be looking for. You don't really have to know very much about cars to know what this is. And if you know the Mercedes model range beyond this C-Class, it's probably fairly obvious where the inspiration for this fourth generation W205 series design came from. By and large, customers come to this car seeking a scaled down version of the brand's S-Class luxury limo. And here, the long bonnet, the set back passenger compartment and the short overhangs are just a few of the things delivering exactly that. The result might not please those who've just spent their lottery winnings on a top S-Class model, but buyers browsing in this car's less exalted market segment tend to see it as a very desirable looking thing. It's just a pity that for our market, there's no option to have the classic Mercedes grille with the three-pointed star bonnet ornament up top. From a casual glance, you certainly won't appreciate the vast scope of this Mark IV model's mid-term update. Indeed, initially, you might struggle to see that anything's changed at all, at which point your Mercedes salesperson will draw your attention to this revised bumper with its wider central lower air intake. Go for this particular model's AMG line level of trim and the corner inlets get these twin black strakes on either side, along with this diamond-style radiator grille that incorporates shiny chromed pins. Flanking it are headlamps that, providing you avoid entry-level trim, will feature full LED illumination. As an option, buyers can specify the multi-beam LED headlamps, which we've got here, which feature 84 individually controllable LEDs, which will automatically provide extra targeted light at junctions, roundabouts, in urban areas or in bad weather. Plus, in high beam mode, an adaptive high beam assist plus feature allows for continuous long range illumination of the road ahead for up to 650 metres without dazzling oncoming traffic. From a profile perspective, the shapely silhouette remains elegantly understated. And the painstaking attention to detail that's gone into things like the wafer thin shut lines is impressive. As before, Apart from this saloon, there's also an estate body shape available, which is exactly the same length as this four-door, but sits 50 millimetres taller. Plus, there are coupe and cabriolet variants, but they aren't our focus here. With this saloon and its estate stable mate, the most notable profile point of visual interest is this character line. Mercedes calls it a dropping line that starts discreetly above the front wheel arch, then falls away more dramatically below the door handles. This second lower crease gives the flank some shape and separates Archie's housing wheels of between 17 and 19 inches inside. We've got 18 inch Tremolite grey AMG Aero five spoke rims fitted here. There are subtle changes at the back too, which as before features these softly sculpted LED rear tail lights. The bumper itself is much as before, these fluted corner slits remain, but this lower diffuser section is new and varies with spec level in its geometry, trim and tailpipe layout. With this AMG line model, it looks especially smart. Now, more important than all of this though, is of course what sits beneath the shapely bodywork. Specifically, a structure almost 50% of which is fashioned from aluminium, which is why when this W205 series model was first launched, it was around 100 kilos lighter than its predecessor. Something else that impressed us when we first tried the original version of this car was the quality of its cabin. So let's see if it still does. 
Now, you'd expect the interior to really sell you on a premium model at this price point, and this one doesn't disappoint. The smart silvered vents, the classy compartmentalised centre console, the elegant analogue clock. It's really not that far from here to an S-Class. Now, specifying this optional stitched Artico leather dash top and this dark oak trim certainly lifts things in that direction. The shiny piano black inlays you get with the base S E spec aren't especially S class like. The optional colour selectable ambient lighting strips that decorate the doors, though, very definitely are. And the fascia is a one piece design on automatic models like this one, but go for a rarer entry level 1.6 litre manual gearbox variant, and you'll get the steeper dash with separate trim elements that's necessary for ergonomic operation of the shift lever. Either way, what's delivered here is proper luxury, just distilled into a slightly more compact form. Now, because this is an update of an older design, it can't include the latest MBUX infotainment system that features on the A-Class, or even the seamless twin-screen layout we're now familiar with from larger Mercedes models. Still, in comparison, the brand has standardised a 10.25-inch central screen with new generation graphics across the C-Class range and added in the option of the kind of 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster you can have further up the Mercedes model lineup. Which means that when specified right, like this, this car can still feel just as sophisticated as the more modern designs it competes against. With these sorts of cars, we rarely feel that enough time is spent on perfecting the seats, given the many hours owners will be stuck in them. This one, though, is superbly supportive and has been further improved as part of this update with electro-pneumatic four-way lumbar support and manual seat cushion depth adjustment. Both features fitted as standard across the range. Now, it positions you beautifully in front of a leather-trimmed three-spoke steering wheel that offers wide levels of adjustability and which has now been revised to incorporate the touch-sensitive pads that allow you to operate whatever infotainment screens have been fitted. Now here, as mentioned earlier, we're viewing through it the optional 12.3-inch fully digital display that replaces the usual twin-tube analog instrument cluster. You can tailor what's shown between the two virtual dials with safety system, trip computer, navigation, radio, media or telephone information. Or vary the style of the whole layout with a choice of three distinct themes. Blue shaded classic, yellow tinged sport and red tinted progressive. Anything this setup can't tell you will almost certainly be covered off by the centre dash 10.25 inch screen we mentioned earlier. As standard, Mercedes provides a pretty basic Audio 20 infotainment package to go with this. But many C-Class buyers will be upgrading to the superior Command Online system we're trying here with its internet access, Linguatronic voice control, traffic information, data and more advanced hard disk 3D navigation. Even in this upgraded form, the screen isn't touch sensitive, but you won't need it to be once you get to grips with the stylized rotary control dial that operates it, which can be swiveled, slid about and pushed. Plus, there's a higher surface touchpad that permits letters, numbers and special characters to be handwritten. Though in this right-hand drive model, there's the awkwardness of having to do that with your left hand. Business buyers will particularly like the Command Online Systems in-car office feature, a Mercedes Me Connect service which allows drivers use of certain office functions directly in the vehicle and access to important data, almost as if they were in their office. In-car office uses, for example, the locations of calendar entries and automatically transfers these to the car's navigation system. The user can also dial into a telephone conference on the basis of a calendar entry. Then the system will automatically detect the required PIN access code before simultaneously dialing in. All that's needed is an active data connection. 
What else? Well, we do have a few issues. The thick rear pillars and relatively small rear screen can make it difficult to see over your shoulder, so it's fortunate that a rear view camera is standard across the range. There's a bit of a bulge down by the footwell that interferes a little with the positioning of your left foot. And as usual with mainstream Mercedes models, the auto transmission's operated by a rather cheap feeling direct select gear change stalk behind the wheel. What we do like, though, is a very nice touch you might not notice, that there are no stereo speakers in the doors. Now, instead, using what Mercedes calls its front base system, they're mounted in the footwells, installed in cavities that act as resonance chambers and give you clearer, crisper sound that fills what is a pretty spacious area. There's more than a metre of headroom up front here. As for cabin storage, well, there's pretty much everything you would want. This beautifully damped cover at the base of the centre stack conceals twin cup holders, a stowage area, a USB port and an optional wireless phone charging mat. Further back, there's this large twin-lidded box between the seats with an SD card slot and two USB points. Plus, there's a large glove box, an overhead compartment your sunglasses, ticket clips on the sun visors, and decently sized door pockets with separate moulded recesses for cups, cans and bottles. OK, let's try the rear seat. Now, when we first saw this W205 series fourth generation C-Class design back in 2014, we found it had grown quite a lot over its predecessor, and it was claimed that an extra 95 millimetres of body length would make it as spacious inside as an E-Class model from the late 90s. Today, though, this car's 4.7 metre length is pretty typical amongst models in this segment. Now, this door opens to a reasonably inviting aperture, though the slightly higher roofline of the estate model will be preferred by family buyers needing to frequently lean in and strap up little ones in the back. Once inside, as with most cars in the premium section of this class, it's comfortable for two adults, but rather cramped for three, mainly because of this rather over-prominent uh, central transmission tunnel. As promised, leg space is decent. There's 686 millimetres of it, enough for one six-footer to just about sit behind another. If you want more room than this, you'll need a D-segment model without a premium badge, a Ford Mondeo or a Skoda Superb, for instance. Want one of those? No, I thought not. Headroom isn't too bad either. As mentioned earlier, you get a little more interior height in the estate than you do in this saloon. 974 millimetres as opposed to 942 millimetres. But either way, it's fine, even if you fit the optional panoramic glass roof. If there are only two of you, you'll be able to use this centre armrest with its incorporated storage area and pop-out cup holders. There are decently sized door bins and seat back storage pockets too. While the classily trimmed door cards and the twin central air vents with their metallic cool touch finishing deliver an appropriately elegant ambience. Let's finish with a look at the boot. Now, in this saloon model, it's usually 455 litres in size, which is 25 litres less than you'd get in a rival Audi A4, but that figure falls to 435 litres in this C200, thanks to the mild hybrid EQ Boost hardware. The same figure, for very different reasons, applies to the V8-powered C63 flagship model. Choose a C-Class Estate and the boot capacity is normally 460 litres or 440 litres in a C200 variant. In this saloon, the space provided is easily wide enough for a set of golf clubs, though there's a small ridge near the bulkhead that can sometimes get in the way if you're trying to slide stuff right back and use the whole one metre length. If you're doing this, you might also notice that the floor is rather strangely shaped, slanting upwards towards the front of the car, which means that larger items of luggage won't sit quite flat. Uh, there are two bag hooks and a couple of netted storage areas, a smaller one on the right and a bigger one on the left. There's a fraction more room beneath the boot floor, though we'd rather do without this and get a proper spare wheel rather than a can of foam and a compressor. Good luck with that next time you're stranded on the side of the road on a rainy night. Now, something we do like that's stored under here 
is this useful fold-out crate. Initially, it seems quite flimsy, but actually, it'd be really useful for a small supermarket shop. Need more room? Well, that's no problem with this saloon model now that Mercedes has standardised the fitment of a folding rear backrest across the range. You activate the folding mechanism via these rather cheap-feeling cargo compartment top levers that feel like they're about to snap off in your hands. Yeah. On the plus side, though, the seats fold in a useful 40-20-40 split so that, if necessary, you can push through longer items like skis without disturbing a couple of rear-seated passengers. With the estate body style, folding the backrest frees up 1,480 litres of total capacity. So, to the budget you'll need for this C-Class model. Now, Mercedes has developed a wide range of different body style options based around this design, including a coupe and a cabriolet. But here, we're going to concentrate on the saloon and estate variants most will be considering. Pricing for mainstream versions is concentrated in the 31 to £45,000 bracket, with a model-for-model -model premium of £1,200 for those wanting an estate rather than this smart saloon. You'll need the entry-level 1.6-litre C180 petrol or C200 diesel versions if you want manual transmission. With those two variants, the brand's 9G Tronic Plus 9-speed auto gearbox is a £1,600 option. With all other mainstream C-Class derivatives, though, that auto box is mandatory, including on the derivative that will account for the vast majority of C-Class sales, the 194-horsepower C220D diesel, which gets the company's latest more efficient black pump fueled two litre power plant. This engine also features in an uprated state of tune in the much rarer 245 horsepower C300D variant. Growing in popularity though is the 184 HP one and a half litre C200 petrol model we're trying here, aided by the extra efficiency of its clever mild hybrid EQ boost system. What else ought you to know? Well, maybe that the most popular variants come with three trim levels, SE, Sport, or as in this case, Sportier AMG line. It's AMG line you have to go for if you want the chance to add in the brand's formatic four-wheel drive system to your C-Class, an option costing £1,600 that with mainstream models is only available on the auto-only C200, C220D and C300D variants just mentioned. We'll briefly touch on the other, much rarer derivatives in this range. From just under £40,000, the brand's older tech 2-litre petrol engine lives on in a 258-horsepower C300 petrol model that almost nobody buys. If you can stretch your budget up to around 45000 and you want a more sophisticated combination of power and efficiency, your dealer will suggest you take a look at a plug-in C-Class model. There are two a petrol C300E and a diesel C300DE, both of which make a 2-litre combustion engine with a 13.5 kilowatt-hour battery and when fully charged provide an electric-only driving range of around 30 miles. All of the C-Class variants we've mentioned so far use four-cylinder power plants. If you want a V6 or a V8, you'll need to set your sights on the potent petrol-powered Mercedes AMG Sporting models at the top of the range. The V6 option, the C43 derivative, costs £50,000 and is the only Mercedes AMG C-Class model to be available with formatic four-wheel drive, which is standard fit and comes mated to the usual 9G Tronic Plus auto gearbox. For the ultimate C-Class, though, you'll need one of the rear-driven flagship V8 C63 variants, priced in the £67,000 to £76,000 bracket. These street racers get the potent 4-litre twin-turbo unit from the Mercedes-AMG sports car, with this model offered with either 476 horsepower or, in the case of the C63S, with a thumping 510. Either way, this V8's prodigious torque means the necessity of mating it with an uprated AMG speed shift MCT 9-speed auto gearbox. Our focus here, though, is on the mainstream part of the saloon and estate C-Class model range, and you're going to need to know how the pricing we've just talked about pitches it in comparison with key rivals. Now, before we get to that, though, it's worth mentioning that Mercedes does also offer two front-driven saloon models that are only slightly smaller than this rear-driven C-Class. 
There's the A-Class saloon, which, if compared with comparable power and spec to a C-Class, would probably save you around £5,000. And there's the four-door CLA Coupe, which is priced much closer to what's on offer here, offering arguably more style, but considerably less rear seat and luggage space. On to direct rivals from other brands. Now, bear in mind here that, as we said earlier, most versions of this Merc come only with auto transmission. So make sure if you're looking at comparisons that you add on the extra that rivals often charge for this feature. We'll start inevitably with the two competitors Mercedes fears most, the BMW 3 Series and the Audi A4. If, as most C-Class buyers will be, you're looking at a C220D diesel, the price comparisons work out pretty much as you might expect. The G20 series version of that BMW is the newest car in the segment and in 320D auto form is priced within around £700 of a C220D. You might expect the Audi being front-driven and having been around since 2016 to be a bit cheaper, and it is. An equivalent 2-litre TDI 190 PS S-Tronic A4 would save you around £2,500 over a comparable C220D. As for other choices, well, Jaguar's XE is probably the most obvious one. Equivalent petrol and diesel auto versions of one of those would save you two to three thousand pounds over a C200 or a C220D, but offer less rear seat space and cost considerably more to run. The XE can't be had as an estate either. You could make similar savings by opting for a comparable version of Alfa Romeo's Giulia or Volvo's S60 Saloon or V60 Estate. But many Mercedes buyers will feel that buying into those brands doesn't quite have the same degree of car park cachet. What else? Well, you can make a big saving by opting for the Lexus alternative in this class, the IS. But that only comes as a saloon and with one petrol hybrid engine. So its segment reach is very limited. An even rarer sight is the Nissan-engineered Infiniti Q50. This saloon-only model will also save you up to five to six thousand pounds up front, but you'll eventually lose most of that with higher running costs and even higher depreciation. Otherwise, your only real choices if you're looking for a similarly sized saloon or estate of this kind lie with volume branded D segment models. The money that Mercedes is asking here would certainly get you a very nice top spec Volkswagen Passat, Ford Mondeo, Mazda 6, Peugeot 508 or Vauxhall Insignia. But again, those types of models will depreciate heavily and for most potential business buyers, their ownership proposition just won't have the appeal of a C-Class. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a C-Class that you really want, then you're going to need to know exactly how generous Mercedes has been when it comes to standard equipment. And the answer, rather surprisingly, is that this is one of the better kitted out cars in its segment. Now let's start with base SE trim. It's impressive that leather upholstery is standard, even if it is of the Mercedes Artico man-made variety. And many rivals make you pay extra for things like a reversing camera, 17-inch alloy wheels, heated front seats with part electric adjustment, and an active parking assist system. All are standard here. Other included C-Class features include Speedtronic cruise control, auto headlamps and wipers, power folding mirrors, a special LED interior lighting package, split folding rear seats with both body styles, an auto dimming rear view mirror and a dynamic select driving mode system that alters steering feel, throttle response and gear shift timings. There's two zone thermatic automatic climate control and infotainment is taken care of by an Audio 20 center dash infotainment screen with a 10.25 inch display, an SD card based navigation system, a media interface and a DAB tuner. Though not Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring, that costs extra. With auto transmission, a dashboard analog clock features as standard, and across the estate range, you also get a powered tailgate and roof rails as standard. Do you really require more than this in your C-Class? Well, perhaps it depends who's paying. If that's not you, then you'll probably want to know about the pricier Sport and AMG line trim levels, which, by the way, you'll need for some of the options we'll be going on to talk about in a minute. 
The sport grade gives you LED high-performance headlamps and lowered suspension for a more purposeful look, plus sport seats and part aluminium trim. This AMG line spec ups the visual ante with larger 18-inch wheels, an AMG body styling pack and a special diamond-style front grille. The brakes, the steering and the suspension also get the sports treatment too. Plus, there's AMG fettling for the seats, the pedals and the steering wheel, part Dynamica microfiber upholstery and open-pore black ash interior inlays. Talking of AMG, you'd expect the top V6 and V8 powered Mercedes AMG sports models to have their own bespoke specifications, and of course they do. The V6 C43 differs from a top AMG line trimmed mainstream model with small but significant changes to the body styling, the wheels and the look and feel of the cabin. As for the V8 C63 variants, well, being vastly more expensive, it's necessary for them to get many of the features that on more ordinary models require the purchase of extra premium pack options. We'll get to those extra packs in a second. Just before we do, it's worth pointing out that whichever trim level you decide upon, your C-Class will come with Mercedes Me Connect, which allows you to connect to your car via desktop, tablet or smartphone through a downloadable app. This includes an emergency call feature that automatically alerts the emergency services with your exact GPS location in the event of an accident. Plus, there's breakdown recovery at the push of a button, telediagnostics that can automatically share maintenance issues with your dealer, a maintenance management feature that reminds you when a service is due, alerting your dealer, and a parking time assist feature that works if you've parked up to alert you when your meter's about to expire. For three years of ownership, you'll also get use of the brand's remote online services package. This allows you to lock or unlock your car from wherever you are and locate your vehicle's position if you've forgotten where you parked it. If you lend your C-Class out to someone else, a geofencing feature can be set to alert you if it leaves a preset geographical boundary. And if your car's ever stolen, a vehicle tracker will show its location anywhere in the world. Now, on to options, and rather refreshingly, rather than listing pages and pages of individual extras, Mercedes has grouped together the main ones you'll want into a couple of equipment line packs, branded Premium and Premium Plus. With the Premium spec we've got here, which comes as standard on the C63 variants, you get the upgraded multi-beam LED headlights, which can tailor their beam to suit the road you're on and surrounding traffic movements. There's also a wireless charging mat, a 64-colour ambient lighting package and a stereo upgrade to a mid-range 225-watt Mercedes sound system. This works via the main premium spec inclusion, the upgraded Command Online infotainment system. This comes with a touchpad and includes hard disk 3D navigation, which can be influenced by traffic feedback from clever car to x communication data. There's also a live traffic information service and Linguatronic voice control, along with a couple of USB ports and an SD card slot in the centre console. You also get in-car internet access to Mercedes-Benz online services, via which you can create in your car a WLAN, that's a wireless local area network hotspot, and access Twitter, Facebook and internet radio. And you can download integrated Mercedes apps for things like weather, Google local search with Street View and Panoramio. If you've splashed out on that premium pack, you'll be offered the chance to pay extra for the 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster display we've been trying here. But if you want that, then it's more likely that you'll get it as part of the further Premium Plus pack, which includes it as standard, along with four other features. Keyless go, keyless entry, a panoramic electric glass sunroof, and a further stereo upgrade to the 13-speaker 590-watt Burmester surround sound system. There's also a 360-degree camera setup that uses four network cameras dotted around the car to provide a bird's eye view of your surroundings. Avoid entry level trim and you'll have the chance to specify the other main extra we think you should look at, the Airmatic dynamic handling package that includes air suspension, a unique option in this class. 
This self-leveling setup works through the modes of the Dynamic Select Driving Mode system and automatically lowers the ride height by 15 millimeters at high speeds to reduce drag and improve stability. Plus, Airmatic can raise the ride height by up to 25 millimeters to improve ground clearance. As for aesthetics, well, you'll almost certainly be paying your Mercedes dealer extra for your choice of colour, since only one shade comes as standard solid polar white. There are various optional metallic or Designio metallic paint finishes. Here we've got Designio Hyacinth Red Metallic, and with AMG line trim, there's the option of a set of even larger 19-inch five twin-spoke AMG alloy wheels. You might also want rear privacy glass, chromed door handle recesses and an LED Mercedes star projector that discreetly projects the brand's logo onto the ground every time you open the door at night. You might want to add a few items to upgrade the interior too. This particular car has optional open pore grey oak cabin inlays. With this AMG line spec model, we could alternatively have specified the Sport model's high gloss black and aluminium trimming. Another way you can really lift the look and feel of the cabin is to specify the option of a dashboard finished in stitched Artico leather. And real leather upholstery can, of course, also be added in. If you're looking at practical stuff, well, there's a tow bar available, of course, and basic roof carrier bars, which, of course, you'll need if you want a roof box. And Mercedes offers several in various sizes. For the cargo area, you might want to consider the Easy Pack Boot Box, a 55-litre multi-purpose box that folds up at the touch of a button and, when not in use, folds itself up and slides away beneath the parcel shelf. You could also specify a shallow boot tub, a storage crate, a concertina ring load sill protector and all season floor mats. A head restraint modular system can be specified to clip onto the back of the front seat head restraints, centering around a base support that can be combined with a coat hanger, a universal hook, a folding table or a tablet mount. Enough with that, let's switch to safety, because this W205 series 4th generation C-Class model isn't one of Mercedes' most recent designs. It can't feature the company's most cutting-edge autonomous driving technology, but there's still plenty of camera-driven safety kit for dealers to talk about. As usual, the key feature is autonomous braking. Mercedes' Collision Prevention Assist Plus package that warns the driver of an impending collision and will brake automatically if there's no response. Testing has indicated that this whole setup will eradicate 20% of nose-to-tail accidents and decrease their severity in a further 25% of cases. And there's more. Attention Assist will monitor your driving reactions for drowsiness. There's also an active bonnet to protect pedestrians and the usual twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus a knee bag for the driver. As you'd expect, tyre pressure monitoring and all the usual electronic aids for traction, braking and stability control are included too. All the more proactive camera-driven safety stuff lies within the optional driving assistance package, which you'll be able to specify only if you've avoided manual transmission and entry-level trim, and have already specified one of the extra-cost premium packs we were just talking about. If you qualify based on that criteria and feel like spending a further £1,700 on your C-Class, you'll find the driving assistance pack to be full of active designated features that don't merely warn you of danger, but also lightly alter the steering to help you take avoiding action away from the hazard. Perhaps the most significant of the pack's features is Active Distance Assist Distronic, which automatically maintains a safe distance to the vehicle in front and... Thanks to incorporated active speed limit assist, can be set to regulate the car to a set speed while automatically varying that speed based on the limits advertised by road signs you pass. This feature also includes active steering assist that prevents unintentional drifting out of lane and it combines with active lane keeping assist which uses one-sided braking intervention to help manoeuvre the car back to where it ought to be on the road. Other driving assistance package features include active blind spot assist, which stops you from dangerously pulling out to overtake when on the move. There's evasive steering assist, which helps the driver in making emergency steering manoeuvres, say, to avoid a pedestrian. And active lane change assist, which assists lane changes with extra steering torque once you've indicated, provided that no other vehicle is sensed in the adjacent lane. 
Plus, there's active braking assist, which builds on the autonomous braking capability of the Collision Prevention Assist Plus system we mentioned earlier, being also capable of detecting oncoming tailbacks and cross-traffic hazards approaching you from both sides at junctions. Should all of this somehow fail to help you avoid an accident, there's the Mercedes Pre-Safe Plus system, which will reduce the severity of an impact on passengers by warning, following traffic and locking the brakes on standstill. The driving assistance package can also make your journey smoother and more economic thanks to an included route-based speed adaptation feature that uses GPS data to automatically adapt your speed before curves, roundabouts, junctions and toll roads. All of which leaves us impressed by just how far you can go to look after yourself these days in a car of this sort, and especially in this one. The Federal Office of Statistics reckons that the driver of a Mercedes is 9.6% less likely to have an accident than the driver of a car of any other brand. Looking at what's on offer here, you can begin to see why. We can quite believe that the future fifth generation version of this car will be an efficiency class leader. After all, engine wise, this C class sits at the cutting edge. Mainstream variants now get the latest in diesel technology and petrol power in a mainstream C-Class model is now at last a credible option thanks to the adoption of mild hybrid 48 volt EQ boost engineering. Plus, there's an unrivaled plug-in proposition offering the choice of both petrol and diesel power. Unfortunately, in this fourth generation W205 series C-Class, all this technical effort is slightly hobbled by the issue of vehicle weight. Back in 2014, when this car was first launched, the adoption of part aluminium architecture made it one of the lighter models in the class, but the game's moved on since then. The strongest selling C220D variant tips the scales at 1,595 kilos. To give you some class perspective, that's 70 kilos heavier than a BMW 320D and 190 kilos more than a competing Audi A4 2-litre TDI 190PS S-Tronic. Given this weighty shortfall, it says much for this merits of this car's all-new OM654 series 2-litre diesel, a replacement for the rumbly old OM651 series 2.1-litre unit that has sustained this car for most of this century. That a C220D gets as close to the efficiency readings of its rivals as it does. This fresh diesel power plant puts out lower levels of local pollutants such as oxides of nitrogen. Let's give you some figures, all of which will be based around a saloon model with the smallest available wheels. Now, the estate body shapes extra 60 kilos of weight will hit your quoted returns by around 5%. And on to the stats. A 194 horsepower saloon C220D variant manages 61.4 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 117 grams per kilometer of CO2. In comparison, that competing Audi A4 2 litre TDI 190 PS S Tronic model we just mentioned manages 65.7 mpg and up to 113 grams per kilometer. And a BMW 320D Auto manages 67.3 mpg and up to 110 grams per kilometre of CO2. For Mercedes, that class efficiency benchmark just keeps getting further away. Obviously, if you choose to equip your C220D with 4MATIC four-wheel drive, your returns will reflect the fact, falling in that instance to 57.7 mpg and 131 grams per kilometre. To continue our perusal of C-Class diesel efficiency, let's give you the official readings for the other conventional black pump fueled models in the range. At one end of the spectrum, there's the base 160 horsepower 1.6 litre C200D, which manages up to 65.7 mpg and 108 grams per kilometre of CO2. At the other, there's the 245 horsepower C300D, which manages 57.7 mpg and 130 grams per kilometer, or just under 10% less than that if you order it in 4MATIC form. 
What about petrol power? Well, a mainstream Mercedes C-Class can at last offer this more credibly. The thirsty old two-litre green pump fueled engine that used to sustain all four cylinder petrol C-Class models still lives on in the rare C300, where it's supposed to return 42.2 miles per gallon and 153 grams per kilometre of CO2. But it's been pensioned off in the volume C200 variant we're trying here in favour of something far more sophisticated, Mercedes EQ Boost technology. Here, an engine of just one and a half litres in size has been optimised for efficiency with enhancements like twin scroll turbocharging for greater torque at modest rev speeds and cylinder bores paired back at their bases to reduce friction while preserving a tight seal. Building on this efficient starting point, this unit uses mild hybrid engineering, a belt-driven starter generator running off a 48-volt electrical system to supposedly deliver the performance of a 2-litre engine, but with considerable improvements in cleanliness and frugality. That's what Mercedes hoped for anyway. This power plant's electrical element is certainly seamlessly integrated, cutting in and shutting down the engine completely at cruising speeds, which will often see you burning absolutely no fuel at all. Plus, the EQ Boost technology allows for a greater level of kinetic energy regeneration, something you can monitor as you drive via an EQ Boost power charge meter in the instrument cluster. To be honest, we'd expected the result of all this cleverness to yield a little more in terms of real-world fuel and CO2 readings than it actually does. A C200 officially returns 46.3 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and up to 136 grams per kilometre. For company car tax, that equates to a benefit-in-kind taxation rate of 28 to 29 percent. So don't get carried away with the hybrid terminology. This C200 is no Prius. To be fair, it's fuel and CO2 readings. Remember, therefore, an also only 184 horsepower variant are better than you'd get from an automatic version of the entry-level 156 horsepower C180 C-Class model, which manages 44.1 mpg and 145 grams per kilometre, or 47.1 mpg and up to 134 grams per kilometre in manual gearbox form. So all that tech is actually achieving something. Here we've chosen to test the C200 formatic variant which manages 43.5 mpg and 148 grams per kilometre. If you want to make a much bigger dent in fuel and CO2 figures than mere mild hybrid technology can provide, and you've a budget of well over £40,000, then your Mercedes dealer will point you in the direction of the brand's two plug-in C-Class models, the petrol-powered C300e and the diesel-powered C300de. In both cases, an electric motor powered by a 13.5 kilowatt hour battery is capable of running the car on electricity alone for just over 30 miles before a 2 litre combustion engine chimes in. Both plug in variants can be charged from 10 to 100% in under 2 hours with a 7.4 kilowatt charger or in under 4 hours from a standard 3 pin UK socket. Based on notoriously unrealistic NEDC cycle figures, the petrol C300e is supposed to be able to achieve over 135 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and emit under 45 grams per kilometre of CO2. For the diesel C300DE, the quoted figures are 177 miles per gallon and 42 grams per kilometre. Of course, you won't get anything like that in normal use, but we could see a realistic return of around 90 miles per gallon being regularly achievable from a C300DE, which in itself is pretty impressive. Let's move to the opposite end of the efficiency spectrum and give you the running cost figures for the high-performance V6 and V8 petrol-powered C43 and C63 high-performance Mercedes AMG models. The V6 C43 formatic manages 30.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 213 grams per kilometre, which isn't actually too bad given its performance capability. You'll need deep pockets though to run the V8 C63, which in both its forms returns 28.5 mpg and 227 grams per kilometre. 
Whatever C-Class variant you decide upon, you'll need to do your part in terms of overall efficiency. Perhaps by setting the Dynamic Select Drive Mode controller more frequently in its most frugal Eco Mode, which is what you'll need to do on this C200 model for the EQ Boost system to disconnect the engine at cruising speeds. There's also an eco indicator you can select to show in the instrument binnacle that'll help you drive more economically. And if you've paid extra for the driving assistance package, an included route-based speed adaptation feature uses GPS data to automatically adapt your speed before curves, roundabouts, junctions and toll roads, which will mean more efficient progress. As you'd expect in this day and age, all C-Class models feature an eco stop-start function that'll cut the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. And there's a fuel consumption section in the vehicle part of the command central media display screen that gives you graphical evidence of your success or otherwise in achieving maximum efficiency. What else? Well, you get a comprehensive three-year warranty that has no mileage restriction. Rival BMW and Audi warranties restrict you to 60,000 miles. And this package is built upon by Mercedes Mobilo scheme, which delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years, as long as you continue to have your car service at a Mercedes main dealer. And it's worth knowing that your maintenance outlay can be kept a little in check by going for the optional service care package that takes care of routine maintenance, spreading the cost of regular servicing, guaranteeing the price of parts and labour for up to four services, and covering the cost of all recommended service items such as brake fluid, spark plugs, air filters, fuel filters and screen wash. As usual with Mercedes models, there's also an Assist Plus dashboard service indicator that monitors engine use and tells you exactly when a garage visit is due. Insurance groupings are pretty much par for the class. Mainstream variants tend to fall into the group 29 to 35 bracket. And you'll want to know about depreciation. Not for this C200 petrol variant or the volume C220D diesel model, you're looking at a car that should hold on to between 36 and 42% of its original purchase price after three years and 10,000 miles, depending on the specification you choose. For reference, the coupe and cabriolet body styles do better, returning close to 50%. It's difficult to underestimate the size of the task facing this W205 series, fourth generation C-Class, and Mercedes hasn't. Both its two main rivals, the Audi A4 and the BMW 3 Series, are more recent designs, and the chasing pack has upped its game too, in the form of cars like Jaguar's XE and Volvo's S60. It all meant that a lot more than a mere wash and brush up was needed as part of this design's midlife update, and that's exactly what Mercedes has delivered. The Achilles heel of the original version of this Mark IV model, its rumbly old 2.1-litre diesel engine, has been impressively dispatched. The replacement 2-litre unit is now difficult to better if you're looking for a refined black pump fueled option in this class. And for the increasing number of business buyers who aren't, this clever mild hybrid C200 petrol variant is certainly worth a look. There's impressive engineering elsewhere in the range too. Mercedes is the only brand in this segment to deliver both petrol and diesel plug-in options, the only one to offer the option of air suspension, and the only brand to retain V8 power at the top of the range. In short, if you care what lies beneath the bonnet and you're browsing in this sector, the C-Class remains a very difficult car to ignore. As for other attributes, well, a lot of them are quite familiar. This remains a supremely easy car to live with thanks to its classy cabin and refined, relaxed driving demeanour. The rival Audi maybe shades this Merc for interior quality, but has front-wheel drive and arguably too many shared bits from lesser models. The rival BMW offers a higher degree of handling prowess than a C-Class, but can't quite match either the engine technology or the cabin opulence of this Mercedes. As for other issues, well, this C-Class does cost a little more than most of its segment rivals, which might be an issue given that it can't quite match some of them in terms of fuel and CO2 efficiency. You'll need to take all that into account when doing your comparative sums. What's not in doubt, though, 
is that an independent buyer can continue to make a very credible case for this car, which in itself is impressive given that this basic design has been on sale since 2014. In summary, if before this model update you were already considering a C-Class of some sort, there's even more reason to do so now. If you weren't, then you might want to take a second look. It used to be easy to pigeonhole buyers amongst the three main protagonists in this sector. A 3 Series for the driving enthusiast, an A4 for the technophile, and a C-Class as a compromise badge equity choice. This Mercedes is now a great deal more than that. It blurs those boundaries and makes your choice in this segment just that little bit more pleasantly difficult.